Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis updated commodities, work our way through the dollar yields, precious metals and commodities ETFs that I follow. Uh, if you need help with anything, check out findinghypervalue.com. That's where I dive deeper into all of these subjects, looking for potential investment opportunities. Uh, we do have a coupon code going on, May Day, M-A-Y-D-A-Y, and I did uh, release the midweek update today. So that is active and you can log on and take a look and see what my opinions are. So let's dive in. Let's take a look, see what's going on today. Starting off with the DXY. DXY still looks a little bit weak. We are getting a little bit of support here. We've got a wick at the bottom of that and a wick at the bottom of this. So we, we do have some buying pressure down here. Uh, but right now, the momentum is still to the downside. Looking at yields, the two-year yield is up a little bit today, but still looks a little bit wobbly is what I'll call it. We had a big selling pressure move lower. This here is the bounce. And then we'll see if this bounce holds or if we continue lower. Uh, a lot of the time in these patterns here, you get a breakout retest type movement. snapping back and forth so it breaks out and then you get a retest which almost looks like what it did today and then we could potentially head lower here in the two-year yield 10-year down a little bit this does look like it's stabilizing to some degree uh, we had a big fall here a bounce and then the bounce back isn't as big some of that selling pressure or yield going down uh, isn't as big. So it does look like it's consolidating to some degree. And maybe we get a pattern out of this. 30 year yield uh, also lower today, 0.75% lower, uh, but it is slowing down to some degree. So we're at resistance, this guy resistance there, and we are stabilizing to some degree, but it still looks like we are a little bit weak as we enter from the top side down. So we wanna see if it holds here or if we make new lows and dive bomb to the downside, which I think is a possibility. TYX, TNX ratio, uh, the shorter end of the curve didn't go down as much as the long end of the curve. So <clears throat> we did have a little bit of an inversion of the yield curve. Not really a tailwind for gold and silver today, uh, as this didn't really uninvert. Bond prices up a little bit, still looks good to work its way on up, which means yields down, bond prices up. And this is the TLT 20 year treasury bond ETF. Looks good to continue on higher. We got the two year 10 year. We had a nice big move in the morning with the two year ripping to the upside in terms of higher yields. And then the longer end, the 10 year, uh, ending up lower today. But the curve inverted and it could stay inverted longer. Uh, overall, we've got momentum to the downside though, and we do have a little bit of resistance right where we're at. We'll see if we uninvert here or not. Gold down $22 an ounce. We do have a little bit, if you look at it this way, a little bit of a squeezing uh, of this going on up. So we do have a, a rising wedge perhaps forming and maybe um, the overall markets get some sort of selling pressure and yields drop and it could drag gold with it. But overall, given the market conditions, uh, I think this will continue higher over a longer time frame. <clears throat> Silver down 0.74%. It's still holding on, still looks pretty good. We can also throw a trend line through here and that looks to be getting cleared already. So um, I'm still in the bullish camp. We have cleared longer term trend lines. So you get a breakout here, you get a return move here, and then we generally work our way up from there. So everything's playing out as expected. Platinum down a little bit, 1.6% down on the daily. Uh, we still have, it looks like a little bit of downside momentum. This could be a flag pattern inverted. Maybe we end up down there. I'd love for it to get down there. Um, I wouldn't mind to buy some more if it, if it does get down there. 
Palladium down a little bit, but still above support. And we've been moving back and forth about the support level. GDX slightly lower, GDXJ slightly lower, and SILJ slightly lower. Um, all of these have a little bit of a pattern where we came on down and we are breaking to the upside. So short, short term, this can go either way. I, I still think it looks bullish where we could head higher. And they all have longer term patterns that have broken downward facing wedges, falling wedges that eventually will work its way on up. So longer term, they all look bullish to me. XCU to gold ratio, uh, it's up today. Broken downtrend line, nothing has changed here, guys. And it just takes time for this to work its way on up. Uh, and that deals with the market conditions. <clears throat> These topping patterns in the NASDAQ and S&P and all that, it just takes time. It's not fast. So this might take some time to work its way on up. And we may experience some volatility as we go on up if things do start to sell off. We might get a big pullback in it. But from this level, this is a fantastic opportunity to be long gold and silver mining companies. Crude oil down 1.5%. We haven't broken out of this. Let me get a little bit different. We haven't broken out of this downtrend line yet. We're on top of a lot of support. And we're still within this pattern here. And this very well could dive down before breaking out if a slowdown does come in the market. Uh, we haven't broken out of the pattern yet. But everything looks incredibly good for a move higher on the longer term. So this is logarithmic here. And we're sitting on top of the trend line here. But we could still hit it again if we do get a slowdown. Uh, we could even bust through it for a short period of time, which would be a false breakdown. And that could occur uh, if we get some sort of slowdown in the market. It'd be very similar to this move here. We get a little spill out before going on up. We've got TTF net gas down 2% today. And that does look like we could pull back a little bit. That is a bearish engulfing in the short, short term. Natural gas in America is up 3.63%. Looks pretty good. Not a super strong closing, but it's working its way on up. It's got the broken downtrend line. Our boy XOP, yeah, you know me. Oh, man, so this is <clears throat> what I don't like seeing about this. I don't like seeing these big red candlesticks. I don't like seeing it. I know people are talking about the yen carry trade unwinding, blah, 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 whatever. Um, make up whatever news you want. But this was strong selling pressure, and we're still underneath resistance with a whole bunch of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight trading days. So it took two trading days <clears throat> to make, well, three trading days, I guess, one, two, and then third, to make a huge move to the downside. One, two, three. And we are struggling to get back upward. This makes me think that we want to go lower. I know, I know. Um, I like, I'm an oil guy. I get it. But it makes me think that we could have the potential for this to sell off. Um, what would be the cause of it? Well, we've got an inverted yield curve that could uninvert, and there could be a slowdown, and people worry about oil during slowdowns. OIH is also experiencing the same thing, which is the energy service companies. One, two, three, big selling pressure move. We really haven't bounced much, which makes it an inverted pattern where we could head lower in the short term. So, and, and we do see a high a lower high and a lower uh, high here. Now we're looking to see what is this low gonna do? Is it gonna hold or are we gonna break and sell off? Uh, I'm in the camp that we very well could sell off here in the short term uh, in energy service and energy in general. Newcastle coal futures down a little bit today, same with net, uh, TTF net gas. Uh, but overall sideways to higher is what I'm looking uh, at this for the longer term. Uh, if we get a slowdown, that very well could negatively impact all of energy across the board. The Sprout Physical Uranium Trust is up a little bit, and that's at the, the lower end of its support zone. But I do think it's possible 
uh, to work its way back to this breakout that we experienced here at about $18. <clears throat> so that would be a retest of that uh, breakout. Okay, there's that rising wedge that eventually worked its way lower. Uh, this is the uranium futures pricing, and it's just moving sideways here right at the tip of trading there. So right in the tip of this falling wedge. Falling wedges are generally bullish, guys. Um, sometimes they do have a false breakdown where they do that. They hit all these stop loss orders. <laughs> they put it right underneath. And then the markets hit them all, and they load up before they, they move higher. Uh, URA, this is um, up about a half a percent. Again, guys, we've got good momentum coming lower. And then the, the, the bounce here has been pretty weak. We easily, easily, easily could roll over and sell off. Um, URNM, same thing. And URNJ, same thing. So the momentum was hitting, bam, bam, bam. And this is the bounce, really? That's the bounce? Looks like a continuation pattern lower, is what it looks like to me. And, and we'll see if that uh, occur, if that plays out that way. Copper down a little bit. This actually looks good to go higher. We, we bounced off support here, came on up, and that is a flag pattern to the upside. So copper doesn't look too bad here, and we'll see if that materializes to the upside. We've got COPX, um, very similar to the trading like copper. You come down, you create like these patterns here. You break down, break down, get a bullish. That's eh, not a bullish engulfing or anything like that, but uh, momentum is still to the downside. We'll see if we can uh, hold its ground here. Iron ore down a little bit. We're getting toward that support zone. Uh, and we could very well break through this support zone and head lower. Uh, then it would be down to here at support about 80 ish dollars. Aluminum up, but we are right on support resistance. And this is like, every day is a down day here. That's a flag pattern lower. Come on down. We've got support. We'll see if support holds right where we're at. Nickel down a little bit, and that still needs some work. Uh, and most everything that I look at is through the lens of where the yield curve is trading and what interest rates are doing. Keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> we've got move moving sideways at support. Still looks okay to work its way on up or go sideways uh, with this big candlestick that it's next to. Merging markets down a little bit, but still looks all right. It's still above support. KRE down a little bit. This looks to me like this could be an inverted flag pattern. That heads lower eventually. We've got TAN down a little bit. And that continues to probably lose money as the solar companies are struggling. Lithium right on support. We'll see if the support line holds or if we've got some selling pressure that cuts through this. Uh, we very well could get down here, guys. So I'm not too antsy to jump back into lithium. Um, this has got a lot of weakness behind it still. REMX down 1.97, still Good momentum to the downside, and I still wouldn't jump in front of this. Let it sell off. Let it sell, let it sell, let it sell. Uh, Baltic Dry Index, right at support, up 0.91% today, and at support. XHB down a little bit. Uh, again, to me, this looks like we. this is a continuation pattern lower. Uh, that's what I see when I look at this chart. Whenever you get these like movements like this, and you get another big bearish engulfing there, and then all the small candlesticks up within the book, bull, uh, bearish engulfing makes me think that we could head lower. Uh, so that is XHB there, the home builders. Russell 2000 has got the same pattern here. Uh, and then the move lower. So I think this is going to move to the downside would be my guess when looking at the pattern. Uh, S&P has got the same type of setup, but it jumped higher here. It's doing like a full retest of this trend line breakout. So a lot of the times you get a big forceful punch out of the pattern, which is here, here, and here. That's your punch. Then it struggles to gain altitude. And try to go on up. And then you usually tap this resistance line and turn and head lower. So we'll see if this is a topping pattern, which to me looks like a topping pattern.
And I would have guessed the topping pattern would have been here and that we were going to go lower. Uh, but I was wrong. It went up more than what I thought. But we'll see. This for sure looks like a topping pattern that could easily roll over. We're also seeing it in the Russell 2000. We're also seeing it in the NASDAQ. It's a rising wedge with a throw over top, bearish engulfing. You get your big punch lower, big punch lower, and then you go and you hit a return uh, move to the resistance level <clears throat> of the breakout. So retest of the breakout. So we'll see if that's a retest or if we get back within the pattern, but that's generally uh, what I see over time is a hit and then a move lower. And that would also uh, go along with an inverted yield curve on inverting and lower interest rates. This all ties together. SMCI up 1.7%, but looks pretty dang ugly. Shoulder, head, shoulder, neckline, breakdown. The bull trap, breakdown. So that's what we've got. And yeah, we're up a little bit today, but still looks pretty rough. Uh, NVIDIA up 1.6%. If this is a top and if the overall markets start some selling pressure, I do think NVIDIA could be victim to that selling pressure. Um, we very well could do an, a, another high. So if this is a top here, uh, and then some people are speculating, perhaps <clears throat> we get another shoulder or something like that. Um, maybe. Uh, I don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm looking at this from a bearish perspective. I'm looking at it like, when are we going to turn over? Why am I doing that? Because the inverted yield curve and lowering of interest rates. That is a precursor almost always to a market slowdown. So if we have the ingredients and the precursor to a market slowdown, I'm looking at this, when are we going to turn? When are we going to turn? We've got BTC down 2.5% today, uh, but it's just been trading sideways. doesn't look too bad. And then Ethereum down a little bit. That still looks good to go higher from the patterns that I see in here. Big buying pressure, small selling pressure. Think of them as flag patterns that just continue to work its way on up. So those still look good. Uh, but that's what I've got for today, guys. Uh, give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website. Uh, we've got May Day coupon code going on. We have a Saturday question and answer session coming up this weekend uh, at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, if you're interested, you can ask me questions directly. Uh, about anything you'd like. I'll give you my opinion. Uh, I can't advise anyone or anything like that, but I can tell you what I'm doing and tell you how I'm positioning uh, in the markets and what I'm seeing uh, in the markets. So uh, that's what I've got for today. We'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.